Lionsgate CEO John Feltheimer said Thursday that two media merger deals in as many weeks of resounding affirmation of the value of content, IP and brands, but that the company wants to keep its head down and not get distracted by this concept of scale. Obviously we will talk to everyone, we listen to everything, he said on a conference call following strong quarterly earnings, even as Lionsgate is considered the most likely to be scooped up next if, or, more likely, as, a wave of consolidation in the sector continues. The company's shares reflect that, as well as solid growth in star subscribers and across its portfolio. The stock's risen steadily since AT&T announced plans to shed Warner Media in a $43 billion deal with Discovery and through yesterday's news that Amazon will acquire MGM for $8.45 billion. Lionsgate shares closed today up 1.3% at $18.66 and gained another 2% or so in late trading after the earnings. Mergers come in waves. There have been constant waves. The waves are gapped farther and farther apart, but they are bigger and bigger because there are fewer and fewer companies, said Neil Begley, SVP of Moody's Investor Services, who has been following the sector since the 1980s. Lionsgate looks a lot like MGM. It's got one of the leading libraries out there, with franchises including Saw, Hunger Games and John Wick. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos said his deal was a simple function of MGM's vast, deep catalog of much-beloved intellectual property. Amazon will use the content to power Amazon Prime Video, which helps power the engine Amazon Prime. In AT&T's case, the Talco, which needs to spend tens of billions of dollars on Spectrum and rolling out 5G, balked at the content investment required to make HBO Max competitive. Together, the deals reflect a shift in the competitive landscape, in this case a pivot to streaming. Similar shifts have resulted in waves of deals from when Sony bought Columbia Pictures in 1989 and Matusta bought MCA, Universal in 1991. Both were hardware companies looking to get into software. One deal lasted, one didn't. Today, everyone has realized they have to get bigger in streaming, so they need content, said Alan Gould of Loop Capital. And they need more content, even as less and less is available as studios keep it or claw it back as soon as possible to feed sister streamers. NBC Universal parent Comcast is also said to have caught at MGM but backed out when the price levitated from around $6 billion to over $8 billion. It's ironic because Comcast has history with MGM. It acquired the studio along with Sony and several private equity firms in 2004 from then owners Kirk Kirkorian, producer Frank Mancuso and Australia's Seven Network. MGM, which had half a dozen owners before that, was overleveraged and filed for bankruptcy in 2010. Comcast could have stepped up, tried to turn it around, Begley said. In fairness, though Netflix had started, streaming was not a big thing then.